Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back continuing with uh, my Twisby pen videos on the Twisbys that I do have. I'm, I'm doing some little reviewing for you so that you can get a, a more up close look at these pens if you're interested in, in them. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the Twisby Mini and the one I have is the AL, A -L, the silver. And so, um, let's jump right in. This is how it comes. It comes in a, a little cardboard uh, outer sleeve. And then it comes in this nice plastic display case. And, and it's pretty pretty nice, actually. Um, lid comes off. And then these little things just slip off so you can get your pen out. And there it is. Uh, down in the bottom of this part here is where they put your wrench and your uh, little thing of uh, liquid silicone grease that comes with it. So that you can later on, when you need to, you can maintain the pen and take care of it. So let's just get started here. Um, it is, mine has a medium nib. I don't think I said that yet, but so mine came with a medium nib. That's what I was ordering everything in when I first started in fountain pens. And now I'm kind of diversifying and broadening my horizons, but, but I still love it. And it's really good for what I do, which is a lot of note taking and a lot of journal and writing. So, um, and this pen, it, it, um, uh, screws to post so it's a really nice secure posting you end up with five and a half inches so you really get the benefit of a full-size pen even though when it's capped it's it's I think it's four and a half inches I've got a bunch of little info like that but you see it's kind of short let's see it's hard it's hard till we get into the comparison part but this is a uh Caveco sport and it's only approximately half an inch longer than that so we're talking about a nice small little um kind of borderline it's mini it's a it's a pocket pen not as small as some of the other pocket pens that i have but um i just love it it's made out of great materials and it uh it's pretty and it's a really incredibly smooth writer, which I've come to realize that all the Twisby nibs are just so smooth. So it, it's a, like never a letdown. It's always uh, going to start up <coughs> with no issues at all. It's smooth and right to the last drop of ink. I mean, there's just no, I've never had any problems with it. And I, I usually run purple ink in this one. What I have right now in it is a Bunga Box Lamont. Sent to me by a generous pen friend who's also a viewer here. Uh, she sent me two samples because I was just, wow, I was just so blown away by the ink. And, and uh, I just thank you so much <laughs> for that. But um, let's see, I, I often lose my, my thought train. So I've got things written down because I, that always seems to help. <laughs> Everything that I wrote on this paper here in my Rhodia Gold book, this is the one I won from Ink Journal, uh, is written with the Twisby Mini. So here we go. I did some writing sample and we'll do another one on camera here. But uh, the pen cost me $60 and that was at Goulet Pens. It is, a, of course, a built-in piston filler. So um, it comes with your wrench and grease and it has it has a smaller ink capacity than the Eco that we talked about on the last video. This is about um, a little over a milliliter ink capacity, but that's still really good. And it's, it's more than what you get in a, in most cartridge, uh, well, in any cartridge converter that I've seen anyway. Uh, but I'm not, you know, I, I, I can't say for absolute sure, but that that's a lot of ink. But it's not as much as, say, your Eco or your other, um, some of my other pocket pens that we'll look at. Um, but still, it's not like I run out writing, you know, I, I seem to do really well with that amount of ink. It screws to post, like I said. It also is available in uh, classic black and clear. And you know Twisby, they make some special editions. So there are pens out there I don't even know about. But, uh, but those are, I'm talking about what's available like right now. Like I call it over the counter, you know, that you can get without <laughs> having to buy it, uh, you know, the minute it comes out. Um, it, it does end up being five and a half inches posted, which is 135 millimeters. And it has a good weight to it, 23 grams. I was thinking the Eco is much lighter. The Eco is, well, not much lighter, 21 grams. But I feel the pen. It, it's a nice, 
nice weight. I like it. And again, super smooth nib. I guess that should be down in opinion because that's, <laughs> I, I noticed that after I thought, well, that's not exactly just a dry fact. It is a steel nib. <laughs> so let's move into the, the uh, pros and cons here. These are of course opinion. Um, I just love their, their super smooth nibs. I, I find these demonstrators just so beautiful. Um, I love the pen. It, it's made out of really good material. It You can tell it looks and feels like good material. Um, it has that secure posting, and I love that. I'm, I'm not questioning whether that's going to stay on. It will. And then the quality materials. And then, you know, it is kind of compact. It's um, it's really nice for some of my tra smaller traveler's notebooks because it goes right on the little um, side, you know, on the little pen loop nicely. So on the con side, which is highly subjective and depends on my year or my, you know, <laughs> quarter or whatever, uh, can be expensive because $60 is a lot for a pen. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, even though I'm now kind of indoctrinated into fountain pens, it's a lot of money. So, you know, um, if I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, if I couldn't, if I wanted a pen like this and I couldn't afford it, there are some other options and I'll show you those. Um, like say if I if I really mangled this and it was my fault and I couldn't replace it um, You know luckily there are some other options, but I'd be awfully sad um, It does have a little less of course ink capacity than the eco But it's still better than a um, cartridge converter and I love it and would I purchase it again? Yes. Yes, if I could afford it, you know because <laughs> uh, there are times when um, it, it, I couldn't you know, but but I definitely love it enough too, and I I'm convinced of the quality and the worksmanship and the writing. It's just a great writer, so yes, I definitely would. So let's pull out um, let's pull out some. I don't want to say comparables because I don't think there's anything quite really quite like this one. But we can at least compare, you know, to other some other pocket pens and the other larger the. Diamond 580 so that we can just look at you know the how it compares so here we have the Quebeco ice sport and What I like to do is go ahead and post them because that's where you can also tell quite a bit really um, and that screws Okay, so we're, we're talking pretty close there. It's just a the uh, Quebeco is just a little shorter and then this is the uh, stipula Passaporto which I'm getting along quite well with, but it's not the same for longer writing sessions. Um, I I would rather go with the mini for a longer writing session, and that's shorter still. Okay, let's move these, and then we'll we'll post. This is the uh, Moon Man Mini, and that has a nice. Let's move these down. That has a, a shorter total uh, length, of course, but it's very very comfortable, and. Uh, very compatible, although this may be just a little bit bigger. I can't really tell, and I'm, I'm not that detailed uh, in my, uh, you know, technical specifications, but definitely these are two very comfortable pocket pens to write with, for sure. You got a little more ink capacity on that one. Okay, and then well, let's do this one first. This is the Wing Sung 3003, which is not a piston filler, and, and it doesn't have the eyedropper capacity that these three have, but uh, it's clear, and that's about where the, where it, uh, the comparison really ends. Um, if you were to write with this one, oh goodness, I'm getting scrambled here, unposted, um, you're, you're quite a bit shorter, but if you post it, you are in the ballpark there, just a little bit longer with the wing sung. Um, what I like about the wing sung is that it's extremely economical. It's it's a couple of dollars, and uh, but you don't get the ink capacity at all. And then finally down here, we'll just uh, kind of compare it to the uh, the Twisby Diamond 580, which is the same price, but it's a, a totally different pen. This I this was sixty dollars. I write with the, the Diamond 580 unposted, so I'm getting just a little bit shorter when I'm writing with that. I don't try to post it. It would be too wieldy, unwieldy for me. So, there we have it. Now, <laughs> I got a little carried away with all these comparisons. What I really kind of wanted to do was talk about if I had to replace this pen, 
um, for whatever reason, and, and I didn't have $60, I'll tell you what I would do. Let's let's take away some pens here so we don't get so so many on our minds at once. I tend to get I, I like to diversify keep, you know, adding on stuff, but that doesn't work too good. Okay, and we'll put this one away too, because <laughs> nice pen, but not for longer writing sessions. Okay. And of course we're we're not talking about this one. So what I would do if I couldn't afford this one and wanted to replace it and have a very similar experience is I would get the um, Moon Man Mini in the clear one and then I would swap the nib or I would continue to work on this one because this is a great nib but it has a lot more feedback than the Twisbees and I wouldn't want to stay with that I would definitely want to uh, you know figure out a nib that would go on here either maybe from my Caveco or some other pen or order a, a nib that would go on here that would be nice and smooth because then I'd be getting a, a comparable experience so that's what I would do and that's something that I'm just finally getting through my head is it's all about the nib but I also like a pen that's a demonstrator so that's what I'm aiming for is that look that nice clear look and that's important too it's not strictly for me it's not strictly about how does my writing look although that's really important to me I want to like looking at the pen that I'm going to write with because I write a lot and I'm sure some of you do too. So that's what it would come down to for me. And then you'd be looking at, you know, under about $14 for the pen and whatever you might invest in the nib or you may already have a nib on something else that you'd just rather have on here that would make it a smooth writer or a smoother writer. There's nothing wrong with how this writes, but it write, writes a little bit drier than what I would prefer because I'm sitting here writing with this a lot so I know you know what it will do so now that we've come around to that let's actually I got my sturdy little uh, cigar box today to just kind of put under and we'll do a writing sample right here for you hopefully we'll try this is a new <laughs> let's see hopefully it'll focus I'm not too sure but we'll try it okay so we got Twisby mini Al with a medium nib. Medium nib. I tend to hurry on these, so my handwriting would probably be horrible. So let's just go for it. <laughs> the lazy dog. Okay. <laughs> the quick <laughs> brown. Fox, boy, I can't remember my name, I guess, jumps over <laughs> the lazy dog. <laughs> um, it's smooth. I don't know if you can see that from what I'm doing, but it keeps up and it's smooth and it's just a delicious writing experience. Um, I've always loved this pen since the moment I got it. It must have been right around Christmas. That's my memory, so... <laughs> And I don't, uh, it just doesn't sit idle. It's right in that uh, purple rickshaw pen case, and I'm using it all the time. I'm hoping that this makes some difference, even though it, it does. My writing's horrible when I hurry, so. Um, but I just, I think it's really, really something for a writer. So, wanted to share that with you. And uh, hopefully that will help you if you're considering a purchase of, of one of these pens. So, we'll go ahead and... Get it capped again. I've just inked this up. I had been running a different, let's see what I've been, I had um, Monteverdi Purple Rain in it for a long time. And that, for a long time, Monteverdi Purple Rain was my favorite purple. But then along came a little package from an, uh, a pen friend with a generous sample of this Bunga Box Lamont. And it just sort of changed things for me. I, I just absolutely love the, the way this ink shades and it shows even better on Tomoy River paper which unfortunately I don't have any right within my grasp here but um, it's just just really awesome ink so yeah that's been really wonderful okay I think that wraps up the pen portion so now I do have a little crystal and it didn't come out in any of my crystal books I don't understand <laughs> but it didn't anyway so maybe it isn't technically a crystal but it's definitely a, um, a metaphysical stone and I probably have quite a bit more 
um, research to do, but I still wanted to show it to you all because it's something you will find at the various crystal places. This was, um, this, this information came from healing crystals. And this little crystal, which is bronzite, was given to me by a, a, a generous friend who is also a viewer. Not, uh, I don't think she's a fountain pen, um, person per se but loves pens and loves crystals so thank you and you know who you are <laughs> so it says that bronzite brings harmony compassion and forgiveness bronzite has an energy that helps to promote peace and harmony and will assist the growth of feelings of compassion and forgiveness in stressful situations they will help you to remain calm and may, um, and may assist you not to lose your temper when you're feeling challenged by life situations. Couldn't we all use something that would assist with that? I, I can. And these stones have powerful metaphysical properties that are helpful to use for meditation. And they have a number of excellent healing attributes. They are beneficial to use to use to grid a room okay I don't know a lot about grids although I do have some nice little layouts over near my pet memorial there uh, my little uh, pictures and stuff of my two cats as they have a strong protective energy as well as helping to cleanse the area of negativity I would think negativity would also include sadness so that explains probably why I like to have uh, this in my grid over there but where is it from okay well I'm not sure about this information here this all came from healingcrystals.com um, the meaning of this stone's name relates to its bronze-like color. I'm hoping you can see some of that. It's real shiny. It may not give you the full range of the color, the lighting that I have today. But it has kind of some real shiny. Now, nah, I'm seeing lighter with my eye than what it's really showing. So, anyway, do the best we can. This is a trade name for the mineral and statite. And these stones may also be a blend of enstatite and Argite. I'm probably mangling these names. The color of these stones is commonly deep bronzy brown with some pieces, some pieces having quite beautiful chatoyant red and golden patches. This one has golden patches, but I'm afraid you can't see um, the way I can with my eyes. So, Okay, so that's the video for today. Thank you very much for watching. And let me know in the comments if you have a Twisby Mini or if you're thinking about purchasing one. I'd love to hear from you. Um, the pen discussions are just wonderful here. We we love um, getting more in-depth about things. And I learn so much from you all. I learn way more from you than I probably are, are giving you, you know. So just a, lots of fun. So have a great rest of your day. And thank you so much for watching. Bye now.